Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for brunch, Quick Bites Edition, where you can grab your miles with a side of smiles, take them on the run midday, in the afternoon, or maybe even a late night snack attack. Let's have some fun to get you moving and grooving, lace up those shoes, put a smile on your face, and let's lock some miles. Coach Christine, let's get our friends moving right along. Hey friends, so excited to get you moving and grooving in there. So let's go in a three, two, and one. We're gonna be moving into a good 10 minute block. You move however you need, my friends. Whether you want to walk this out, you wanna skip along the way. You've heard us say it before if you've been with us. You know how we roll here, it's all good. I'm walking today. I actually walked this morning before we started doing this recording. But trying to incorporate more of it just to you know, break out of my routine a little bit, not make it all running. Get a little extra movement without putting too much pressure on myself. You know, that was one of the things that I started during the pandemic that I actually don't feel like I'm doing as much during the pandemic because our lives had kind of become more, or at least in my household, it became a little bit more um, tunneled and where we really kind of stuck to not getting out as much into the everyday kind of world. So I had to get out. I mean, I just could not be inside all day. Just, I just couldn't. So on non-run days, I got into a really good habit of midday, just getting out for a good walk, which maybe is part of where Quick Bites really comes into play and has a special place in my heart. I was just about to say, I'm like, so you were doing Quick Bites before we were even cooking them up. I was, you know, it was a super intense time in my career world at that time. There was just a lot going on. So that was my time that I would block on my schedule. It was one of the few times that I would not allow meetings to be scheduled and I would get out for a walk. And again, kind of where the selfies with the makeup came into play because (laughs) I would have to usually come right back in, rush right to my computer to get back into that Zoom life world. But it was such a good way to clear myself of all of maybe, and I'm sure people can relate to this, all of that workplace drama that happens. Because there's always some kind of workplace drama going on. Are you trying to send me subliminal messages? (laughs) Are we having workplace drama? (laughs) Are we going to have a therapy session here? It's such a different world, isn't it now? Uh, No, I can't say that we do. We don't have any workplace drama. But, you know, there's always a little bit of stressors in where everybody's life is, be it career, home, just always a great opportunity just to reset for yourself. And that's what I think Quick Bites is basically a great reset. I do love that you marked off and you blocked out time to walk the block. Like, I mean, it's built in right there. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it was so perfect. And I started to actually... They, I don't know if you've heard the term uh, managing up, where you kind of talk to your superiors in a way where you subliminate, like talk about subliminate, you lay down messaging that maybe has them incorporate it down the road, but you don't do it as a, like, hey, you should do this. It's more of just a quiet kind of a thing. I would try to that's do that. marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. You are absolutely right. So I would try. I was hoping so much that it would kind of take off and that they would kind of block the 30 minute section for everybody to get out for a walk. But never <laughs> So we have totally diverted from what we originally wanted to chat with you guys about. Today is a really exciting day because it's all about, well, we're going to take our own little spin. I'm going to let Coach Shelby introduce exactly what it is and how we are celebrating it today. So today is officially a National Curves Day, which I actually never knew was a thing, but apparently it's always celebrated on the second Wednesday of October. So our little wedness day lined up perfectly. But we've talked about it before, but we can never talk about it too much, about just being comfortable in the body that you have and appreciating what your body does versus necessarily how it looks, even though you can you can feel how you look too. We're not against that. Um, but I actually think it's kind of funny that we started talking about drama. We're talking about National Curves Day. And I don't know if you've heard about the drama that has been surrounding our beloved Lizzo. I feel like she's always at, she's always in the mix. Like you can't talk about body positivity and body appreciation without having a recent issue that we could always bring to light <laughs> when it comes to Lizzo. Why is that? I don't really know. But tell me more. What it, what's going on with our beloved Lizzo and who do we, whose butt do we need to go kick? 
Well, apparently, we're going to have some beef with Kanye West. For some reason, he felt the need to start talking about her and how she was unhealthy and this, that, and the other thing. And she's like, can I just live my life? And I think people hate on Lizzo because she doesn't conform to the socially acceptable standard of beauty, which, I mean, who does other than Barbie? Which even Barbie is getting real with the sizing and the images, but I think people just hate the fact that she doesn't hate herself. And it really just gets people's go. So what I'm hearing you say is that more so than her body, people actually hate the fact that she's confident and yes. that we, what we're hearing is almost more of like a social issue where it's like, as a female, we want you to be mired in self-loathing and God forbid you actually enjoy who you are and represent that person out into the world and your uniqueness. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not surprised Kanye. I feel like he's, that's just who he is, but I love that Lizzo from what I can tell, always has a really subtle way of saying, just let me be who I am. And I, this is who I am. So just why, why constantly come at her? I, it's fascinating <laughs> how she approaches it. There's a, there's a lot to be learned about her. I did want to share, if, if you look up Body Appreciation Day or National Curves Day on Urban Dictionary, <laughs> it has a slightly different meaning um, not maybe a different meaning, but a different way of approaching it. So if you look it up Later. right now, it says, we need to get some confidence in ourselves or show the world we don't care what they think. We love our bodies. Talk about Lizzo here. So this is the day to spam and appreciate. And then it goes in through a scenario of how you would use it. It would be girl one saying, hey, it's body appreciation day. And two, girl two says, what's that? Girl one says, it's a day for women to have confidence in themselves. So spam that picture on your IG. So I'm hoping, friends, as you're out there, this is a good day to have some body appreciation selfies that you could post on Instagram. And the funny thing is, and this wasn't planned, I hadn't shared this with you off the mic. I always feel like I need to preface that because we always do seem so in sync. But I actually did my long run the other day and I've shared on here before, I've been struggling and everything. And I was able to run six miles straight through for the first time in forever. Yay. And the only, thank you, the only thing that I kept thinking about is because I felt down in my body. I felt not comfortable and everything. And the only thing that kept going through my brain was I choose running. I choose this feeling because I can look in the mirror and still maybe not love what I see, but I felt so strong, so accomplished. And I, I choose running. I choose chasing that feeling and that level of strength versus trying to achieve something and a number that my body just might not be into Mm -hmm. because we all have like oh this BMI this weight this measurement what have you I don't care what a chart says sometimes my body is just not gonna do it and I can strive to feel good and to be healthy even if societal standards aren't met. So I, first of all, congratulations. That's amazing. I'm glad that you are feeling like you're choosing the right thing for you. And it sounds like you're, you're building in that confidence in, and where you're at and how it's paying off for you. So that's amazing. Great work. Cause I know that that is a lot of hard work that we should definitely celebrate, which again, folks, if you're moving through here and you're taking this as your midday break or you're moving or grooving, congratulations to you as well. Cause it's always so important to remember that we get to choose this. There's no one forcing it. I mean, regardless of whether you have a private coach or a personal trainer, or you get out there on your own at the end of the day, it just comes down to you getting to choose this for yourself. So there's that. But I love that you are feeling it and celebrating it. And do you feel like that's helping you in a lot of ways to get more excited? Because it's kind of like one of those situations where when you see that happening, it gets you a little bit more motivated, a little bit more excited to get back out of the next time around. And it does. Like, I couldn't wait for my next run day. Like, I had to force myself not to run the next day. Because I know for me, back-to-back runs, just I don't fear as well. Especially still building mileage, getting back into a groove. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm sure that I'll have another day that I don't feel so great. But I had said that one 
crappy workout or run doesn't mean that you are a bad runner or a bad person because a good run or a good workout is just right around the corner. And I think it's important to note that you just need to celebrate more of what your body can do versus being so hyper-focused on how it looks because we all go through changes. We all go through seasons. Some are naturally on the little bit of the curvier side. Some are naturally on the slimmer side. Mm -hmm. It's all beautiful. It's all relative. So kick it up a notch. Feel good. So I think, Shelby, this is the time that if you're okay with it, I'm going to share something that I've shared off the mic with you. And I think you and maybe only three people are aware of as of right now until this happens. <laughs> but one of the things that I did personally in my life that helped me appreciate that truly beauty and strength comes in all shapes and sizes was a naked 5K. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna actually be okay with putting this out this, into the world? I am, my friends. For the record, those um, post-race bananas at a naked 5K just are a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So I have, I have so much to say about this, but before, while we get everybody's blood pumping, we're going to go ahead and let's do a one minute pickup before we really unpack this. That was such weird timing to segue this in, but we're just going to roll with it. This is what happens when you record live people. So one minute pickup in three, two, and one. My first question though, because we know you're the queen of race day photos. I'm going to assume there's no race day photos. No, no, there are the pre-race photos, which is just me showing my running gear for that day, which just so happened to be a pair of shoes and socks. <laughs> oh, That's my it. Goodness. Um, so was it freeing? Advisor. Was it freeing? <laughs> um, yeah, it was actually quite exhilarating afterwards because having hangups um, of our bodies and being quite literally bare for the world to bear them all was a thing, but it was incredible because what I remember specifically was after you get past the shock of it was within the first mile, you get back into like, oh, this is, this is still a run. Like people are still actually really racing or really working on and it was um, actually pretty competitive. I was surprised, but pretty competitive. And getting to see the different shapes and sizes of bodies and what bodies do when they're in movement was just absolutely beautiful. And I mean, I know, I know people, you guys probably think that I'm like a uber hippie and I, I, I am. Let's take it back up into that next 10 minute segment in three, two, and one. But every single shape, every single size, every single race that I could think of was accounted for at this particular 5K. And every single person across that finish line was happy and proud and it made me think of happy, shiny people. <laughs> That's what I saw. I really, I really admire you though for doing that because for somebody, I mean, I'm assuming that you don't live in um, a new colony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's appropriate term, so forgive me, but I, that's the only way I actually know how to describe it, a nudist colony. A clothing optional, yeah. No, clothing I don't. Clothing optional. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those to where that's definitely out of your comfort zone, but I, I don't think I actually have as much of a mental block with running naked around people, as weird as that might sound. I have more of a logistic of... How does that work? Like the chafing, the the boobs coming up and slapping my face. Like I don't. Yeah. So how? One of the things about body appreciation that I remember very distinctly is that um, when my mom, when I was caregiving for my mom, and she has that very thick Spanish accent, I remember um, coming into her rehab one day when she was uh, rehabbing from you know kind of a fall she had had, and she's like, Cristina, you are so lucky. Finally, you are in moda, which means in fashion. I'm like, I am. She's like, Yes. Your small boobs are perfect. It's what everybody wants now. And I'm like, um, <laughs> thanks, mom. You're basically calling me flat chested. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna take that as a compliment, I think. But I am not actually that big on top. Um, friends, if you, you ain't think small. I, like, I I use really good brassieres that make it look oh. like, you know, that I have more curves. You're so than I actually fancy <laughs> brassieres. <laughs> but um yeah, I, they actually don't really, they're fine. They do what they gotta do. There's a reason why in Nat Geo, we saw plenty of people who didn't have tops on and they were able to do all of their daily functions. 
Uh, there was only one really large chested individual there who I think had to wear more support, or I mean, she chose to wear more support, but everyone else was fine. Yeah, I, I think after- There's, there's honestly, not as much movement a, as you think. Having a kid, like my chest area, I'm like, yeah, it is what it is. But my thighs, that's where I worry about. Like, I chafe and I wear, I mean, but I guess if you don't wear shorts, you don't really have the same risk of chafing. You don't. don't There's a lot less chafing, actually. I'm I'm never probably going to do it again. I guess I should never say never. I I likely won't be doing it again. (laughs) I likely won't be doing it again. It was a one and done kind of experience. And I had read it from a local blogger um, who had done it. And she talked about how freeing it was. And I was like, should I, could I, would I? And the answer was yes. Um, so friends, if you, if you're sitting on the, on, you're sitting on that like little fence of, is this something that intrigues you? I say give it a try. I say give it a try. <laughs> See, I, th- I hear nude and sitting on a fence just painful. <laughs> That's exactly where my mind goes. As long as you take your own towel, sit on it. They don't care what you do. <laughs> That's, oh God. That's, the, that's the one rule they have. Such bad visual images right now. Race like, swag is you do get your own towel. I mean, <laughs> seriously, they give you a yeah. towel. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the race swag. Mm-hmm. Is it like a full body? Like, I have a lot of questions. It is I a full body do, towel. But, wow. And yeah, it's I don't took, think the post race banana turn as well. Yeah, no. It's, I, but I, it's talking about being confident. I mean, like that's the ultimate not confidence test by any means, but that's the ultimate, like there's no barrier. Uh, literally and none. We're and not saying like you have to go do a naked 5K by any means or a nude 5K, but I mean, I can see where that could really release a lot of inhibitions and just, just go for it. It's weird because I still felt very conservative when it came to like wearing a sports bra when I go out for a five, like a, a local 5K. I think it's because it's what's appropriate to the situation. And clearly that was more of an appropriate situation to, to be able to bear it all. But um I do feel that it did give me a completely different viewpoint. And I always think whenever people talk about the quintessential runner's body, I'm like, I have seen every body shape run and it, all, all of our bodies are meant to run. There is no doubt. So that definitely left, left a very lasting impression in my brain that I've been able to take over into my regular life. But ironically, another way that I think that helped me appreciate curves was, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the world of like burlesque. Yes, I only know it because of the Christina Aguilera movie with Cher. That's how I introduced Superless. <laughs> I feel like you're a, are you a big Christina Aguilera fan? Oh man, I, when I was younger, I was obsessed. She was like the, the idol that I had. So she's the perfect person for us to talk about then. She's had struggles from when she was teeny, teeny, tiny in her teens, naturally thin because of that's her body shape. And now she's kind of um, grown into herself as a woman. Her body has shaped and it was under fire for a while. Do you feel like that's something that helps you relate to her a bit more now that you've seen her have like both of those? Not really, as funny as it is. Like I, okay. I want to say yes, but being truthfully, no, I just always loved her. I just always thought she was quite frankly like a badass um it just she and she is just something about the way she carried herself yeah that's that's it she has fire yeah it is and that's what I think I gravitate towards in people in general so when I think of some of the people that I love again that's where I think of a lot of the burlesque people that I fell in love with because they are generally all body shapes and sizes are very well represented in that world but also like Adele and and this goes back to, to discuss things both ways so she was. She came under fire when she lost too much weight by people who are more on the body positivity spectrum. Or Rebel Wilson has come under fire for losing some weight. And it's like at the end of the day, it goes back to mind your plate, mind your own body, and get through the day. Like there's what they decide to do with their body as long as they're choosing to do it in a healthy fashion. And even then, we have no idea what they're doing. It like we have no clue what's going on. No, and it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I I think that's one thing I've really learned as I've started getting, quote unquote, older and growing up is you're always going to have somebody who makes a comment or Mm -hmm. who thinks you should do this or do that or you're doing this wrong or that wrong. And at, at the end of the day, to care that much about what other people are thinking, it's exhausting, quite frankly. And I have been at my quote unquote smallest and still had comments made. 
Mm. I've been at my curviest and still had comments made. And it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the person that I am. So trying to let go of those ex- expectations. And like we've talked about before, like postpartum, people think you just snap back. And you don't. Some people do. And that's fine. I was actually even listening to an interview with Molly Huddle, who's a professional runner, had her first child, and she was even saying how different the landscape is now versus, I mean, 10 years ago of what's expected. And we've talked about before about Kira D'Amato, somebody giving her crud for the way she looked and said she didn't look like a marathoner. And it's like, I'm sorry, where, where are these rules set in place. Yeah, Last where's the time catalog? I checked, <laughs> yeah, it's not an American Girl cal- catalog or a Barbie catalog, <laughs> even though yeah. I got one of those the other day and the young child and me geeked out, but that's another conversation. I, would, I definitely want to talk about that because I saw somebody at the theme parks with her American Girl in a backpack and it was the scariest thing I think I've ever seen. Um, because <laughs> it, just, it looked like she was carrying around this baby doll in like the most creepiest possible way in my mind. But anyway... <laughs> And that's saying something for you because you get down with some scary Yeah, but still, I was like, "Mm, I don't know. She's kind of behind this plastic case. It feels like there's a lot of social connotations here that I'm I'm just not digging right here. But we'll talk about that. To a certain degree, it has to do with curves in a lot of ways. um, And there's actually a great book about it where it talks about how the female body has for centuries been seen as something literally seen as something that can be commented on because it's an object and we're starting to see well you can appreciate your body how that when we turn the uh, our eyes away from objectifying what it looks like and more appreciating what it does that makes a whole different connotation about how you feel and how you feel about others I think too because I think that as you release judgment of yourself you also release judgment of each of others as well right and we've talked about it before like how we could wear something that somebody else might not. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you look back at the 1800s, the curvier you were, the more desired you were, the more um, quote unquote worthy you were determined because it was a sign of wealth and prosperity and all those other things. So, I mean, if I was in the 1800s, they probably would look at me like, no, pass. Yes, there is a, a lot to that where it's interesting, right? How we've seen that body definition change over from like the 20s and then again with Twiggy and then the 80s where it was like Jane Fonda. And friends, with that, we're going to have you do your own jazzercise during this next 60 seconds. You can pick up that pace or do your dance break in three, two, and one. Which, did she do jazzercise? What was Jane Fonda's workout? Do you remember? Yes, I remember when I was in the womb. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> Did you never see the face of Jane Fonda's workout, though? I admit, I have not Googled them lately. <gasps> you must. There's also something called Prancer Size from the 80s, which cracks me up. You well, and then what's, who's the that. other dude that was really um, popular? Richard Simmons? Yes. I knew him. Yeah. He, yeah. He's actually, he does make me laugh. Um, so friends, while you guys are moving through this, know that we have just one more 10 minute block on the other side before we wrap up our quick bites, but you guys are doing amazing. And if you're prancercizing, that's a great opportunity to take a quick little video and shoot it over to us at time for brunch podcast on Instagram or in our Facebook community page. Cause they, I always think smile. of the, I always think of the song, ain't no one gonna break my stride. Oh, Ooh, that that's one. a good one. Yes. Yeah. Three. That's two. always it. One, right back into that 10 minute block. So let's talk about how a size eight, let's just say size eight and just start out, it can be very different on everybody. And you were talking about how the size two clothes, while they may be a bit, they may be in your size, still may not fit you the way they would a size two individual. So how do you work with that and get around it? I've had to really expand my mind to realize that the numbers really don't mean a whole lot because in one brand, I could be an eight. Another brand, I could be a 16. Like there's no rhyme or reason. And I actually, I worked retail when I was younger. And I remember getting into an argument actually with one of the male associates because he was telling me that the two pants were the same size. And it was 
the same size of whatever it was. But I'm like, no, they're different. He goes, no, it's on a machine. It doesn't matter. Like, they're all cut the same. And I said, no. And I held up the same size, same brand of these pair of shorts. And there was like an inch difference. And I remember the look on his face. And he was mind blown. It's like, this isn't a perfect science. Like, no matter what crud you read, like, yeah, it might be on a machine, but even machines aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that a lot of times. Like, if I'll go and I'll try on a pair of pants, especially, and I'll have the same pair of pants in the same size, there's two of them, I'll look and I'll compare them to see which one is bigger. And I, I challenge everybody to do that with shirts, with pants, not as much as shoes, because that's that's a little bit easier to gauge, but the sizing can be marked the same, but it's not. And yeah. I get so I get so fired up talking about this because it's one of my biggest pet peeves and actually why I'd wanted to go in the fashion industry when I was younger, because I was so sick and tired of it. I had no idea about that, Shelby. So did you take fashion design classes? How did you want to go into fashion industry? Tell us more. Are we gonna be seeing I- time for brunch clothing line? Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe that's why I like merch so much. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I originally wanted to be a fashion designer. I Ooh. wanted to move to New York. I wanted to design clothes for um, for all women because I was so tired of not finding clothes that were cute and so, fun. Not specifically just athletic wear. You actually loved the thought of designing for everyday wear. Yeah, this was totally before I even ran, cared about movement or fitness or anything. Um, I really loved high-end fashion. And I loved gowns. I loved, I was really big into the paint stroke design before it was actually a thing. So thank you. Do a little hair flip to flex my <laughs> muscle with that. But no, I, I have sketchbooks full of designs that I had done. And I actually was accepted to go to a fashion design program and decided not to because I was afraid if I fell out of love with fashion that I wouldn't be able to do anything with the degree. And Shelby, I I love this so much because first of all, I did not know this at all. And I am a huge fashion geek. Like I watch fashion week videos and I can appreciate that those individuals are not, those designs are not made for, for humans, friends. I'm just, I mean, they just really aren't like, High-end fashion is truly an expression, artistic expression of what the designers can do. And usually those collections are then completely refashioned for people to actually be able to purchase because they're just not Even on practical. celebrities. Yeah. yeah. Even on celebrities. If you look at the red carpet, it'll say, oh, this appeared on so-and-so fashion week. Here's the picture of the fashion week. Here's it on a person. Different clothing. Sorry, yes. not to cut you off, but like yeah, that, no, that it's a, it's it's absolutely they can't. It's just they can't. And I think Karl Lagerfeld talked about um, old controversy about things. He used to have a saying where he wanted his models to basically just be clothes hangers because that's why he tended to gravitate towards having more of those really rail thin models um, because it's it's meant completely differently. It's not meant for actually everyday use, but. See guys, we're learning so much about each other as we continue to exploring. And now I know that Coach Shelby and I are gonna have to head up to New York Fashion Week one year. One year. <laughs> oh, I'd love it. I, I always have been a big believer that the clothing should fit the person, not you fitting the clothing. Right. And I think the same can be true for running. Like your running should fit you. You shouldn't try to fit this the ideal, erroneous plan. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And I love, though, I still feel like there's there's a lot more coming around in terms of that. Um, I'm trying to think of specifically, I think, Christian Siriano, who makes clothes more inclusive. Oh, he's a genius. He is. He really I remember him is. from his uh, runway days. Yes, I know. And he's gone on and made such a wonderful, fabulous career for himself. But I see a lot more of that. And that's always super exciting. Again, I know we talked a little bit about that in our body positive and confidence. Um, episodes so we can always link that in episode notes as well about some of our favorite clothing designers but in terms of athletic wear do you feel like there is something that you absolutely would recommend people not to purchase or buy and you don't have to call them out by name but is there something that you have found like this specific attire just may not be comfortable for you take it into consideration or or do you feel more um, 
like uh, break yeah. the rules. Yeah, I feel like if, if it's comfortable for you to run in, do it. Like there's something that you might be comfortable in that I'm not going to be, but that doesn't mean it's bad. Um, I don't know if I'll call out this brand specifically, but there is one brand that I will not purchase anymore. Um, I actually have deleted them from my closet slowly, but surely I only have one thing still from this brand that I can't part with because I really do like the shoes. Um, but I have decided to not, but not, not patronize. What's the word? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're patronize. Yeah. You're not going to support their, their mission statement with your dollars. Okay. Yeah. That. Um, just because I don't feel, <laughs> I don't feel like even though they do have a more body inclusive line, they're jumping on the bandwagon. Hmm. They're not actually practicing what they preach. Mm-hmm. Um, now I do support athletes that happen to be sponsored by them mm-hmm. because I'm a hypocrite apparently. <laughs> but yeah, I um, I'm very choosy on the brands that I will wear based off of the views and actual actions, not just, oh yeah, this is a hot topic right now. Let's make some money off of it. Let's talk a little bit about that. I know we're wrapping this up, but friends, if you are curious about clothing that's body inclusive or size inclusive, or if that matters to you specifically, the way that I have done it in the past is that I don't just go by their, whatever their latest commercial du jour is i will actually follow the link all through into their website and see are they representing their clothing on their website in their inventory on different types of body styles for me that's always a marker of is this an organization that i feel is truly living the creed by employing models and or athletes that kind of span the horizon so that's just a little tip that i've used i don't know if that's what you tend to do as well coach shelby Yeah, I definitely look at it. And like even their efforts, like if they're a brand that hasn't been at the forefront, okay, they're putting this out there, they're trying. How are they trying? Mm -hmm. And look, because no one's ever going to get it perfect. Like I respect brands that are evolving. Um, Lululemon is one of them. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're trying to move the needle. They're trying to be a little bit more inclusive and expanding. Are they getting it all right? No, but... That's not the point. Perfection is not what we're going for. Right. Progress right, is. Right. And so I'll stay tuned. I'll see how, how they do. Oh, I appreciate that so much because I do think that's really important too, that we stay open-minded, that some people may, it may just take a shift in the top dogs before we start seeing some changes, but changes are possible within these organizations. But the way that they'll keep doing that change is by us demanding it. So friends, when you get back to wherever you are going to end your day at this quick fight, start considering a little bit of first and foremost, take that body appreciation selfie and throw it onto your Instagram because you deserve to do so. And then start looking about your social media and does it represent, do the companies that you follow represent your ideas? Because that's how we make a difference. And give yourself a hug. Like, I don't think people hug themselves enough. And yes, I know I sound super touchy-feely, but like, just wrap yourself in a hug real quick. It feels good. Like, you'll look weird, but I mean, again. I mean, she, she's hugging herself right now and it does look super comfy, friends. Like, I want I want to do a hug. It just feels, it looks like it feels good. So I think that's a good one. I, I, mean, I give myself hugs. I'm a good hugger. Like, I will be a little pompous with that. I, I give really good hugs. <laughs> So basically, nobody's going to come at you about your hugs because you're like, I will go toe-to-toe for this. This is the one thing that I know. Okay. (laughs) This is my life skill, people. (laughs) Friends, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Quick Bites. We love that you love yourself enough to get out there and move your body. Now go ahead and snap that photo after that hug and tag us. We can't wait to see it. Join us again for a time for brunch Saturday long run edition or come back for more of these midweek quick bites regardless of when or where. We're going to be serving up more miles with a side of smiles and a self hug. (laughs) 